It's August, that's vacation time, and the traveling golfer is on vacation in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania. And where would we be on vacation? Well, of course, how about chestnuts roasting on an open fire? Jack Frost nipping at, well, we don't know what he's gonna nip at in the summertime here in the winter. He might nip at your nose a little bit right over the hill at the famous Jack Frost ski area. But this is summertime and we're gonna take you around this fabulous Jack Frost National Golf Course right here on The Traveling Golfer. American owned. Family operated. Five generations, fiercely focused on one thing, putting the best beer on the bar, Yingling, America's oldest brewery. Wow, what a picturesque place to put a golf course, the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania, and that's why Jack Frost National is right here. We've got the general manager, Keith DeVos, with us, an old friend, Keith. Hi, Tony. Welcome to Traveling Golfer. Thank you. Welcome to Jack Frost. Well, thank you very much. Keith grew up in the Philadelphia sub suburban area and then spent many years in Myrtle Beach where I worked a lot with you oh, down yeah. there. Yeah. It's great to see you back in Pennsylvania, and it's great to see you at Jack Frost National, a little homecoming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's good to be back. A lot of old friends here and uh, familiar faces, so we're happy to be here. Well, that's absolutely great. Keith, you came to a terrific property. As we stand here, you can just see that it has everything you need, including all of the practice facilities. The only one who wouldn't like it is Alan Iverson. <laughs> practice? <laughs> But you've got the putting green, the short game green, and what a great driving range. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice place to come out and hit some balls, especially this time of year when it's hot and humid. Uh, we always got a nice breeze blowing here, and it's always a little bit cooler up here compared to down your way in the Philly area. So yeah. uh, usually about 10 degrees difference. I don't know where you can get a view like this at a driving range, but it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about the market itself, the fact that Jack Frost National is a freestanding daily fee course, but you can put together packages for people to stay and play also. Oh, absolutely. We can arrange any kind of stay and play packages uh, with rooms, condos, homes, whatever the customer is looking for. Uh, we do have some rates set up with different golf courses in the area, so you just don't have to play Jack Frost. So it's kind of an a la carte uh, golf package that we have set up here. We have Brian Nuss, the superintendent here at Jack Frost National. And he's been here, well, pretty much from day one. Not only does he have to keep it lush and green now, but he had to do the grow in. Brian, welcome to the Traveling Golfer. Thank you. Hey, uh, that was not an easy job growing in this golf course. Uh, I know the designers and the shapers all had to deal with rock and yes. elevation. Tell us what it was like to get this grass to stick on the side of this mountain. It, it took a lot. Um... The first two years through the grown, we had a lot of rain, the soil, I mean, it, we cut this out of a, an oak forest, so, you know, the soil is rocky, it's clay, pH is extremely acidic, so um, we had to put a lot of amendments out, a lot of time watering, seeding, overseeding. Seeding again. Seeding again. <laughs> Washouts were a, tr a problem. Yes. Uh, our second year, we had a hurricane come through, and it seemed like once a week we had heavy rain, so we... A lot of washouts to fix out the second year. Well, the end result was unbelievable, and to tell you the truth, the conditioning really pretty much from after the first year has really been good here. Uh, the climate obviously is good for growing grass. Yeah, it's, it's really good for growing grass up here. The season's a lot shorter, but during the hot times where people are struggling, we have great weather up here. Tell us about these greens. They putt great. The ball rolls well. What do you have on there as far as the grass? It's A4 bent grass. A4 bent grass, and that, of course, can be made just about as fast as you would ever like. We're running in between 10s and 11s on the stint meter. And, of course, they're large greens. We average about 8,500 square feet per green, so they're, so they're pretty big. The hills may have made it tough to get the grass to grow there, but once it did, 
I'll bet it helps drainage. Yeah, uh, when they built the course, they put in a very, very good drainage system on top of it. So with all the hills, the water runs up, runs off, runs to the drains, and gets off the course very quickly. Now, I know, Brian, that with some of these spectacular views, you get sunsets here that are absolutely unbelievable. The golfers can come out to watch them. The animals come out to watch them too then, huh? Yeah, it's a, a great place to be at sunset. Um, you come out, not only do you get great views with the sunset, you, you can see quite a bit of wildlife and usually the friendlier wildlife that you want to see at that time. A lot of elevation, a lot of rock, but they handled it very well here. And the main thing is it's not too hilly and I think that adds to the playability of the course. Oh absolutely, uh, they did a great job, uh, nice wide corridors uh, carved through the natural forest here. Um, you know, so it's not your typical Pocono mountain golf course where it's like walking down a bowling alley. Uh, it is, you know, it gives you plenty of room to miss the ball uh, and, and then you can also find your ball out there as well. I think this is the longest course in the Pocono Mountains, am I correct? I believe so. Uh, it stretches to just under 7,300 yards from the tips. Wow. Uh, but you, we do have five sets of tees for all types of golfers so they can move forward and, and play it at a length that is suitable for their game. The uniqueness about Jack Frost is the longer holes are all kind of designed and set to play downhill. So if you're playing a 490 yard par 4, your second shot is generally going to be downhill to, to a green that sits below the tee box. So it doesn't play quite as long as those uphill. You need to strategize on this golf course. Don't get distracted by all the views. So Keith Tell us, and you know how to play, I know that. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about how to get around Jack Frost National, how you would actually play this course. Well, the thir first thing you do is get in a golf cart because you don't want to walk it. It's, uh, it's uh, spread out pretty good. But uh, other than that, I mean, you know, tee to green, it's, it's pretty straightforward right in front of you. There's no blind shots out here, uh, which is very unique for a mountain course. The biggest defense on the golf course is our green complexes. Uh, once you get on the greens, you're looking at some fun, uh, you know, and, and that's the thing that hurts people the first time they're here because they don't know all the little intricacies of, of Jack Frost and the greens. Terrain is, is huge out here. For example, our 10th hole is a green that when you're on the green, it looks like you're putting uphill, but you're running away from the high point of the mountain. So there's a lot of deception there. And that generally runs true for all the you know, all the greens out here on the golf courses. You look for the, where the high side is on the mountain and it generally will run away from there. Yeah, well, there you go. Run away from the mountain. Remember that as we go out on the golf no, course. No, we want them to come to the mountain to play, but we don't want them to run away. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you for the correction on that. Putts run away. Golfers come to the mountain. The top of the mountain, right next to... Jack Frost Ski Area, famous, famous place for many years in the Poconos. Absolutely. Uh, Jack Frost Ski Mountain is just past our entrance. Uh, it's, it's a unique ski area because they start at the top of the hill and go down, and then they, they come back up to the top. So, That's right. The lodge is on top of the hill. Yeah. We're actually a little bit higher here. The, the 10th tee here at Jack Frost is the highest point in the county, um, so it's a very unique setting here where we're actually above the ski area. Well, for those who've come to the Pocono Mountains, you know that in the summertime, this breeze makes things a lot more comfortable, less humid. But for the eyeballs, there is nothing like golf in the Poconos in the fall. Imagine this vista when all the leaves change. Keith, you've seen it, and I'm sure it is an eyeful. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Usually about mid-September on through probably the first, second week of October. It's just spectacular. You can see for miles. We're at number 11, the signature hole here at Jack Frost National. 152 yards from this tee to that beautiful green down there. This has got to be the one people talk about. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's funny because when they come in, they drive into the entrance and they see the sign and they see the bunkers behind the green. So they actually think the hole goes uphill and it actually is reverse. It goes downhill, so it makes it a, a nice little you know, par three that you got to judge your clubs on because of the downhill play. Well, it looks way too tempting to just talk about, why don't we play this hole? Well, we should. Don't you owe me $10 from Myrtle Beach? Well, I probably do, but I'll tell you what, on this one here, we'll play closest to the pin for a nice cold yingling light lager back in the clubhouse. Sounds great. We have plenty of it.
Need a little kick. All right, Keith, you already beat me on closest to the pin. You might as well top it off with a birdie. Well, let's see what we can do, Tony. Good looking par, good looking par. Well, we say a sad goodbye to Jack Frost National Golf Course, one of the courses I love most in the northeast part of Pennsylvania. It is an absolute blast to play. But the fun doesn't end when you drive off the property here because there's so much more to do in the Pocono Mountains. We're going to take you around the Poconos to see some of those sites after the round. But first, we want to say a special thank you to Keith DeBose, general manager here at Jack Frost National, the whole staff. You've got to come back and see them, see exactly why we love Jack Frost National here at the traveling golfer, just go to www.jackfrostnational.com right here on the traveling golfer. Don't go away, there's much more to follow after the round as the traveling golfer continues. There can be only one number one. One outperforms. One outplays. The one shot. The one moment that separates one from the rest. That's when one redefines distance. That's how one earns number one. R1, the one driver played by more tour pros than any other. From TaylorMade, the number one driver in golf since 2001. A little fly fishing. Just one of the things that you can do after the round at Jack Frost National. So much to do, so close. How about the great dining? Blake's Lee Inn, Boulder View, Shenanigans, Louis Prime, Nick's Lake House, and right on 115 around the corner, there's the Village Squire and Murphy's Loft. Great dining so close, and it makes it easy because there's great places to stay close to Jack Frost National also. Blake's Lee Inn, and a very friendly Best Western right down the street. Use those as your base. You'll find some great places to enjoy the Pocono Mountains, and we're gonna take you to a few more right now. What a full day of action. How about golf in the morning at Jack Frost National? Zoom on down to Pocono Raceway, the stock car racing experience. We've got President Jesse Roverano. Jesse, welcome to the Traveling Golfer. Thank you. Golf and race cars. I can't think of a better day. A few beers after, not in between. Correct. It would be a great day. Uh, let me just say this. We are in front of Victory Lane, where every race at Pocono Raceway starts and finishes. And in July, you had none other than golf legend Fuzzy Zeller here to say, and he said it was one of the big thrills of his life, gentlemen, start your engines. That's a, uh, an exciting thing for Pocono Raceway, and then it all evolves into your stock car racing experience. It does. Uh, we run a lot of people here every year. But basically, we'll put you behind the wheel. We'll get you up to 160 miles an hour. Now, in one particular day here, you say you do 35 days in the summer. You had 150 people through here in one day. That's a lot of racers. How fast do they go? We can get the average Joe up to about 160 miles an hour. The speed sensation, the first time, I guess it scares a few people. Yeah, the sensation really comes from the grip in the tires and the corners and the banking. Um, you know, that's where the speed sensation really comes from. The straightaways aren't, you know, too bad at 160 mile an hour down the straight. It's when you hit the corners and the cars really turn and really hug the corners. It's like nothing you've ever felt. Jesse, any age can do this uh, driving experience? 18 to whatever. We've What's had drivers up to 84 
years old. We have 84. A, we had a grandmother comes out and does it every year. Usually she stops by and does some skydiving before she comes here. You're kidding no, me. No, absolutely serious. Well, the 84-year-olds, you can tell, they're the ones with the turn signal on all the way around the track. <laughs> <laughs> Left turns only. That's it. Okay, best way to find out about the stock car racing experience? 877stockcar.com. That's Jesse Roverano, the president. Stock car racing experience. Thousands of people at Camel Beach today in the water park. As soon as I put on my Speedo, I'm going to join them. There's a thought for you. I've got the world's biggest playground for adults right behind me, and we're going to go inside. I have my personal tour director, Tanya Lewis, director of marketing, to show us the sights. And a one, and a two, and fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. And we've got plenty of stars here at the Mount Airy Casino Resort. I've got the lead star right here, Tanya Lewis, my tour guide. Thanks for having us to Red's Lounge in the Red Steakhouse. Hey, it's cool. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for coming. And yeah. thanks for bringing the piano in for me. You're welcome. Just for you. <laughs> well, not really. No, not really. Every Friday through Sunday, we actually have live entertainment here at the Red's Lounge. And this corner, you might have to get armed guards to get me out of here at the end of the night. I love it here. Oh, we'll leave you here, Tony. Uh, we won't great. That. Thank you. And of course, out there is a huge playground for adults. Mount Airy Casino Resort has over 1,800 slot machines and 72 table games. So anything you'd like to do, it's right outside those doors. We have over 188 rooms here at Mount Airy Casino Resort, and they are very luxurious. We have a 52,000 square foot indoor-outdoor pool complex being built right now as we speak. The name of the pool complex is called Get Wet, and we'll have um, a bar, restaurant, cabanas, hot tubs, and also a swim out area, so you'll have Adirondack chairs and fire pits. It's going to be spectacular. All right, next time we do this interview, it'll be floating on the rafts <laughs> in the pool at wet. It sounds absolutely great. The whole atmosphere at Mount Airy Casino is so cool. It's modern Poconos. It's fun. The best way to find out more about it, Tanya? Is to go on our website at www.mountairycasino.com. And that's it from Red's Lounge, where you could catch me on any Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Fly me to the moon. We're on the patio of the beautiful new golf clubhouse at Mount Airy Casino and Resort to talk about the changing face of the Pocono Mountains. And nobody has facilitated that change more than the Pocono Mountains Vacation Bureau We've got the emperor, um, excuse me, the executive director of the Pocono Mountains <laughs> Vacation Bureau, Carl Wilgus with us. Welcome to the Traveling Golfer. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Tony. Anytime. Always great to talk to you, my friend, and I'm not blowing smoke. I've been coming to the Pocono Mountains for a long time, since the mid-80s on a regular basis, and I've seen the transformation and there is nothing like this when I first started coming up here. It, it's a different Pocono Mountains, isn't it? It really is. And this property probably symbolizes that better than any place else. I mean, it was once seen in the 60s into the 2000s as really a honeymoon destination capital for people throughout the, the mid-Atlantic region. But that life cycle has kind of come and gone. We are in the process of reinventing ourselves as a four-season outdoor recreation family destination. And, you know... What you've seen, what you're doing here, is a, is a true indication of that. Um, the plethora of activities, the number of golf courses, more than 30 here in the Pocono Mountains, yeah. the kinds of activities with the water park development, um, the treetops, rope courses, the hiking trails, the biking trails, you know, the amount of uh, floating that's done either on kayaks, canoes, or on rafts up and down our river systems is a, it's just a great representation of what there is to see and yeah. do here. And it makes it a, a popular place for anybody to come just to get away and relax. There, there is a full package of amenities of things to do here that will entertain you, whether, you know, you're, you're a, a man, a woman, kids, and a, it really does keep a family very much entertained and involved. The Pocono Mountain Vacation Bureau is the collection area 
for information about everything in the Poconos. Easiest way to do that? Well, it's our website. It's very simple, 800poconos.com. That'll have all the information, and you're absolutely right, 800poconos.com. Makes it simple either either way around. Not only do we have a lot of things to do in terms of activities, but there's a lot of festivals and events just about every weekend throughout the year. That's one of the things that makes this such a popular place to come, because something different is happening all the time. After a long, hard day of activity, there's no better place to get a Yingling light lager and kick up your feet and relax than the new pool bar at the Inn at Poconut Manor. Tony Leodora's golf wardrobe, courtesy of Antigua, the leader in modern golf apparel. Anybody see where that last shot of mine went? Well, it was a bad bounce, that's all. <laughs>